All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back. This is video number nine in my series on making a mobile game with JavaScript. Now in this uh, video, we're going to be going over actually moving those dots around the screen now, which is gonna be pretty cool. So we're gonna get started on this right away. So the first thing we wanna do here is we wanna make a new variable inside the touch move. And we wanna just call this um, touch, whoops, touch. And we're just gonna set that equal to the first touch in the touches array, the e dot touches. And next, what we're gonna do is we're going to make a new variable called move chords. And basically move chords is going to essentially be, well, actually for now, it's just an, a new object. And this object is going to hold an X property, which is essentially just our touch dot page X, and then a Y property, which is our touch dot page Y. And essentially what we're doing here is every time, every frame as you're moving your finger across the screen, it's grabbing new move coordinates for where your finger is every frame. And so we use that to update the location of the circles on the screen with our finger. So since we know what that is now, what we want to do is make a f another variable and I'm just going to call it diff. And essentially what diff does is it gets the difference between basically the coordinates now and the coordinates that are uni like where we where we started touching because by getting the difference. So if we started here and then we moved over here, we know that this right here is what we need to move all of our systems. So basically what we do is I'll just say this and I'm just gonna make a new property called move X and we're gonna set that equal to the move chords and this is gonna be dot X and then we're gonna subtract basically our universe um, dot touch chords dot x from that so basically we get the move coord coordinates from right now where we're touching and subtract it from our start value which isn't changing whereas our move chords is changing every frame so we're just getting that difference and then we're just going to do the same thing with the y so now we can take the move chords oops move chords dot y and subtract the universe dot touch chord dot y and that will get us the difference make sure i got that right okay so now the next thing we want to do is now we know what the difference is each frame between where we started touching and where we've moved to so now what we're going to do is we need to run through a for loop because each system needs to redraw every frame so we're gonna have to run through a for loop of the, in this case, the game. Do I have that right? Hang on one second. Oh, it's our universe that holds our systems. Okay, so we're running through, whoops. The universe.systems.length. And so here, Every frame now we have a for loop that runs through each system. And so now we have those new coordinates. So inside of this now, we wanna create a new variable X property. And essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just going to add a parse int. And this is just to clean it up because I don't, I didn't want, I guess it really doesn't matter, but um, in this case, I just kind of get rid of those long decimals. Um, and then we're just going to, in here, another bracket, we're just gonna take that difference, dot move x, and we're actually going to add the game, or sorry, universe, dot systems. And in this case, we get the system at that index, and then we do, we know that all of our systems have chords, so we get the chord, and then we get the x property. So essentially what we're doing here and then real quick, I'll just do times 10 divided by 10, and that's just gonna parse off most of the decimals and just leave like one decimal point. And now what we're doing here is basically the X position, we're getting the difference move 
and then we're just adding it to where that system already was. So essentially we have this distance that we had, you know, we started here, we moved here, and now if the system's over here, well now we take that and put it here, so now the system moves here. So now the systems will move based on where our finger moved. And so now we just need another variable here, y, and we're gonna do the exact same thing here. So we're in this case, we're gonna be doing all the y values. So same exact thing, just with the y's. And we'll do dot chords dot y. And then we'll just throw this in here. So now essentially what we have is we have those differences. And now we know that x and y position is where the system should be on the screen based on where your finger is. So what we want to do now is we, let me see here, I didn't add a real, okay, so this is where our system gets rendered here. So this is where the coordinates get added in the very beginning of the game. And I found that it's a lot easier, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this line, and I'm gonna make this new, I'm gonna call this real time chords because this essentially is going to hold the chords at any given moment like throughout the entire game whereas the chords may be a little different it may not be the updated version um, at all points but what we're going to do is we're going to be in the move function updating the real time coordinates for each of these systems so we're going to say universe and then we're going to get the systems at that point dot core sorry we just change that real time chords dot x and we're going to set that equal now to this x property and then of course same thing with the y and now we have the x and the y are both updated now um, in the system so its position is set but we haven't drawn it on the screen yet, which is the next thing we need to do. So now we actually need to update the HTML elements that are on the screen. So to do this, um, let me make sure, yep, yeah, okay. So we need to add one thing here, because these each need IDs now in the HTML because we need to be able to tell them apart. So I am just going to give them IDs. Um, in this case, just give them an ID of system um, and then we'll you know add in I or we'll do underscore I so just do system in a string and then um, you know break the string and then add and add the I so we just give them you know they're just numbered eventually you would have names for all your systems and that's what I have in here is I just I have names for all them unique names and I just name the ID the name of the system but for now we can use that so then we jump back down here. And so now we know that we can just put system underscore and then just add I in this case. And now we're going to be editing the CSS properties. Well, just the, just the transform that we have up here. So let me make sure I got everything right already. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and do WebKit transform, and we can do a translate 3D. And then essentially what we're doing here now is we're going to just be plugging in these new values that we wrote. So here we can put in X plus this, make sure you put pixels um, and then we'll put Y in here, pixels, and then you can just put zero pixels in there. So now it will update those systems on the screen and move them around. And then just to be safe, I'm going to put the regular transform in there also. Um, and there are other prefixes too. Uh, I don't know that we necessarily need them because I believe WebKit would work for Android too. So that should be fine. Um, all right, well, I think that everything is good to go. And you know, if you test this, I will have 
the working version above me um, to show you what this looks like or what it should look like um, in your browser or in your on your phone and um, all right well this will wrap up video number nine so guys i hope you are enjoying this series make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and i will catch you in video number 10. see you guys hey what's up guys sorry i am adding i am cropping in this little bit of video because i forgot something very important to add luckily it is something that we can add at the end so really quickly i'm going to make a variable and called you and I'm gonna get the document and then I'm just gonna get element by ID here and we're just gonna grab the universe the universe element and here we need to do this um, we're gonna do you dot add event listener because we didn't even add the listeners the touch listeners so none of this would have worked for you but we're gonna say touch start and then we're just going to say universe dot touch start universe add event listener for touch move and we will add the touch move and then you dot add event listener touch end, and we will add the universe oops touch end. alrighty so that is all we need so I am checking out. See you guys.